The anime begins with the explanation of a war between the king of underworlds Athena and Hades. A prediction of a new holy war is also summoned. The holy war is held every 200 years between the powers of light and dark. The scene switches to Europe in the 18th century, where a boy tries to save a puppy from evil boys and gets hurt. Tenra reaches and saves his friend and the puppy from those two devils. The boy's name is Alone and he lives in an orphanage. In the next scene, Alone is painting a wall with a beautiful portrait of an angel, a saint from the Cathedral of Forests hit there. He gets impressed with the color formation and texture of the painting. He also admires his artistic skills and appreciates his work. He helps him to track away for a vast mountain to find the true blend of colors for his paintings. By true color, he means those which exist without the influence of any light, and are present only in their true essence. He reaches and explores a place like a paradise on earth. A woman named Pandora in jet black claims him their king, as he was the purest soul on earth in the present era. She kisses him and gives him a mysterious locket, and he is now the king of underworlds, Hades. A boy named Libradoke, known as the most potent supreme gold saint smells Hades' cosmos and searches for it. Two men inform him that the process is now starting, and King Hades is reborn in the form of a human. He gets furious after hearing and asks them to find the clue. The scene jumps to Tenma's place, who rescues alone on the mountain path. He also notices some weird changes in his personality. Moreover, Tenma is ruthless and starts talking mysteriously about his unique powers gifted to him naturally. They get the news of the river overflowing, and alone approaches to save the town. However, he is considered the most naive, kind, and weaker. Tenma asks him to stop. He reminds him of a promise that their friend Sasha had made with Tenma to ensure alone's safety. However, Tenma go by himself to keep his promise. Finally, he succeeds in breaking a large rock and saving the town with his gifted ultimate powers. Doak sees all this and gets so impressed. He advises him to get the training to be the saint of Athens and he agrees. He comes back while alone is painting his portrait. But he cannot find the red hue of Tenma's eyes, which is a unique blend. He apologizes and decides to complete the painting when he returns as Saint of Athens. Tenma leaves with Doak, but while leaving, Doak notices the Alone's locket. He discovers that he is the king of the underworld, but doesn't say a word. Alone is still a young boy who doesn't know anything about the locket in the underworld. He and Tenma promise to complete the painting when he returns as a saint. Doak elaborates on the sanctuary of Saint of Athena's in Greek mythology and Tenma's training gets started. All the young people here are getting the training, but only a few would be saints one day. They will be responsible for saving the justice, peace of the earth and the sanctuary. Tenma and a super aggressive competitor challenge him and get into the fight, but Tenma fails. He tries to break a rock but can't and learns what real destruction is. There should always be a motive behind your action. Because with a strong motive, you can destroy anything, Doak says. He gets the lesson and breaks a big tough rock with a single punch. His motive behind this destruction is his promise of returning as a saint, which he made with a loan. He notices the same flower bracelet at a distance that Sasha gave him as a gift. He steps back and gets amazed to see Sasha there. They had met after a very long time. Meanwhile, a monster with electronic worms attacks them. Tenma tries a lot, but Sasha with her supreme power of shining stars kills it. She is now the goddess of Athena. The scene switches to two years later where Tenma wins the competition and is now the saint of Pegasus. He is responsible for saving the earth, Athena, and other saints. He is instructed to fight with Hades and gifted a unique cloth along with the powers of a horse. On the other hand, Alone's paintings are getting darker and darker whatever he paints perishes. He was so gloomy. Then Pandora appears and takes him to the Cathedral of the Forests, where he meets the same saint who came to see his artwork. A star is shining on his forehead, which is the sign of underworld troops. In the next scene, Tenma reaches out to Sasha, standing in a chamber and reminding their beautiful past. Suddenly Sasha feels the awakening of Hades. Alone paints three children recently, finds them dead and sees a demonic painting of himself killing people. Pandora tries to convince Alone of their theory of death is salvation. They also state, death is a freedom in itself, freedom from hunger, sadness, poverty. So you should not get sad about the deaths of children. The three children who died are now happy and smiling after dying because they are free from the hassles of life. Finally, Alone gets convinced of their theory and Hades awakens in his body. The holy war has begun. In the next scene, the silver saints of Athena's attack the Cathedral of Forests, where Alone as Hades now resides. They get killed by the soldiers. Hades resurrects their bodies on earth in exchange for the head of Lady Athena's, Sasha. Tenma and others are being prepared to set to the same dark cathedral of forests to keep an eye on Hades. Tenma realizes that the place is their hometown, where the cathedral is and promises Sasha to bring Alone safe. Tenma sees the town is set on fire and bloodshed everywhere, so he rushes to save Alone. 
However, he sees alone in front of him is Hades. He displays the old painting of Tenma in front of them and completes it with the bloodshed of people. Alone kills his friend and finally finds the true red hue, the color of blood. Tenma rips off the flower bracelet of Alone while dying. Dok attacks Hades with full rage, but he is not that strong and soon killed. Underworld's initial tasks have been accomplished. To perish the town kill Tenma as Saint of Pegasus, remove the human nature of Alone. The red hair of Alone turns to jet black, and all of his specters kneel in front of him. Hades is turned into a demon. They see the constellation of Pegasus turn black, as they believe every constellation in the sky represents every saint. Their mission is to turn everything, sky and earth, black. Because they believe that when every color mixes, black originates, which is the color of death, sweet salvation. They move towards the sanctuary to kill Lady Athena and bring the finest black to Lord Hades. Saints of Athena are categorized into silver, bronze and gold and they get their names according to their gifted powers and clothes. Tenma is a bronze saint, the strongest ones are the gold, who represent each zodiac sign, and their cosmos are related to these signs. In the next scene, Tenma is found to be partially alive, and one other silver saint, Yado, survives the attack of Hades. They have been brought to Jammer by a lady, Yuzureha. It is where Athena's saints injured or dead bodies are revived, and now they have to revive Tenma. He is still alive, because he is wearing the flower bracelet which Lady Athena gave him with lots of prayers in his childhood. The Master of Jammer provides Yato with the Holy Sword, in which the blood of Lady Athena is invested a long ago. Yato has to move to the Netherlands, where all souls move before jumping into the Death Hole. Yato and Yuzuria move towards reviving Tenma, and a specter of Hades is already there. They succeed in rescuing Tenma, and find out that one of the three leaders of the underworld was moving towards Sanctuary to kill Lady Athena. In the next scene, Pandora informs Hades about the rescuing of Tenma and the attack on the Sanctuary, which is now started. On the other hand, Yato and Tenma rush towards Jamir, before all petals of the bracelet drop to revive Tenma's soul. One of the strongest leaders of Hades, with his specters attacks the Sanctuary. But the path is covered with demon roses, merely their scent can destroy them. Pisces Albefica, a poisonous blooded saint, attacks the specters one by one and kills them. One powerful specter somehow tries to trick the saint with his poisonous fog. But the saint, in return, tricks him with thrones and the black rose. The leader comes forward and is so powerful that he succeeds in tying the saint with invisible strings. He treats the saint as a puppet and resultantly, the saint loses one arm. He kills other specters by throwing a white rose, which follows the enemy and kills them by ripping off their heart. However, the Hades leader wins by killing Saint Albafica, visiting the nearby village and destroying it. A little girl in a nearby village, who carries the Albafica's rose remains alive and runs to the sanctuary for help. Meanwhile, the leader tries to kill the girl, but a gold saint appears and saps her. The leader makes fun of him after defeating Albefica, but he returns with broken bones and a severely injured body. Albefica engages the leader by attacking Chrisman's thorn attack on him, he survives it. But actually, he stabs a white rose, embedded with all the poisonous blood of Albefica's body into the leader's chest. He dies with a bolt of enormous thunderous lightning and storm. The Hades and Pandora see the constellations of Albefica, and the leader and the specters fade away. They get to know that they are dead now. On the other hand, a messenger comes from Jamir and advises them to hold on to the war for one day more. In return, Lady Athena will get good news, it was Tenma's resurrection. Lady Athena obstructs the Hades movement and casts a protective spell around the sanctuary. Alternatively, Tenma and the team are aiming for a golden rain tree with the spell to kill the specters of the underworld, because they are immortal. At the exit, a monstrous three-headed wolf, the watchdog of the underworld attacks them. They survive, run towards the golden rain tree, and try hard to escape. However, Hades appears and tries to manipulate Tenma into his theory of death. Tenma disagrees and promises a fight in the near future. On the other hand, all houses of Zodiacs and the twelve golden saints are perishing. They all are worried for Lady Athena and her place at Pope's house. The scene switches to Tenma seeing a golden saint from the Virgo house. He spent all of the previous years meditating, and continuously comparing the theories of both dark and light. He seems to believe in Hedda's theory. He freezes the time and insults Tenma for being emotional, violent and impulsive. He strengthens him by remembering his promise to Sasha and alone. He considers him the only one who can save the earth, because it is their history that only Saint Pegasus ended the holy war by defeating Hades. So his responsibility is now to save Athena's and the world. He paralyzes all five senses of Tenma, and only the brain is awake. Tenma successfully defeats Virgo's saint by strengthening and controlling his sixth sense. Saint Virgo is a resource by Lady Athena to teach Tenma the lesson of fighting and controlling his senses. She is preparing him for the actual war. Due to his excellent fight with the saint, the golden rain produces fruit to help bring Tenma's life back. 
Yato gets poorly injured and is in his last breaths, but they are back to life due to Athena's sword and prayers. They get back to the sanctuary after new lives. They give the berries from the golden rain, and the Virgo saint is responsible for changing them into weapons. On the other hand, Hedda's specters reach Athena's boundaries and attack. Yato Tenma and Usuria are responsible for stopping them at the main entrance. Meanwhile, the Virgo saint is converting the berries with his cosmos. And finally, they kill the immortal specters with this fruit. The berries are the fruit produced by the only living thing from the underworld. Virgo saint sacrifices himself by using all his cosmos to convert the fruit into a weapon. Lady Athena also chooses to spend her remaining life suffering to save justice and the world's peace. She keeps holding the protective spell for a very long time. In the next scene, the Taurus saint approaches the specters who were killed with demon roses. Taurus saints kill them again, but they can be awakened anytime. Doak and Taurus saint discuss the sacrifice of Albafica and Virgo saint for Athena and regret their helplessness. The scene switches to Taurus saint and a powerful specter of heads who have been fighting above the mountains. The Cosmo of Giant Star could be seen in the sky from far away. Three cadets from a nearby village are seeing all this. They remember Saint Torres's mighty strength long ago when he trained them. They are weak, but still, they try their best to save Athena's through learned skills. The scene switches to the Taurus Saint, who attacks his strongest Cosmo, but the enemy is so strong and he escapes all the time. Meanwhile, Doko reaches the Silver Saints, who get severely injured while fighting with some of the specters. He consoles them and moves to the Taurus Saint to aid him. The enemy is strong enough to burn the Taurus Saint's body and create deep holes into the body. In the meantime, Dok and the three cadets reach the spot. The Taurus Saint's body is burning with dark flames. Eventually he dies and the body turns to ashes. Dok arrives and tries to stop but can't. Meanwhile, Taurus Saint manages to defeat the flames and three cadets follow them. Taurus Saint musters up all his courage and gathers three giant stars to attack the enemy. But he reflects the stars towards the saint. Cadets are their beloved ones, and they love Taurus Saint. The enemy is lost in deep thoughts for some time. Meanwhile, the stars revert and attack him. A large rock fell on the enemy, and he dug deep into the ground. He gets severely injured, but the Taurus Saint doesn't kill him, because he notices some virtue in his aura. The enemy leaves the place and promises to kill Taurus Saint next time. The cadets, Doak, bring the severely injured saint back to the sanctuary. Taurus Saint reports to the sanctuary, where he learns about the Lady Athena, whose body and soul are continuously breaking. She has been holding the protective spell around the Athena for a long time. She didn't say a word about her suffering and bore all this with a smile. She is also bearing a considerable trauma that her brother, alone, is now Lord of Hades. She is so sad that the boy who used to be the most innocent one in the town is now killing people. Alone is not only her friend but the dearest older brother of Sasha. Sagittarius's saint is the one who adopted Sasha long ago, and then her journey of becoming the goddess of Athena began. All golden saints are worried about the lady Athena and are ready to sacrifice their lives for her. Suddenly they sense a weird cosmo on the top of the twelve houses, who is Hades. Sasha tries to make him remember their golden past and love of childhood but in vain. Alone's human nature and innocence have entirely vanished, and now he is just the lord of Hades. He only believes in changing the pain and suffering of life into death. Sasha gets furious and attack him. Meanwhile, Tenma comes, and the war begins. Hades is so mighty that he paralyzes all twelve saints in their houses. Tenma is holding the prayer beads in his hand and stopping all specters of Hades. Heads and Tenma are having a conversation about their promises and friendship. But Hades is not in any remorse. Instead, he doesn't consider himself alone, but the god of the underworld only. The puppy, alone saved two years ago, enters there and in no time changes into the watchdog of the underworld. Hades is going to attack Tenma. Sasha screams, Big Brother. Her scream makes them fall into a golden place, where they see the talismans of the previous Lady Athena from over 200 years ago. They get some time to save the sanctuary from the Hades attack. But Hades gets weakened by these talismans. The scene switches to a place above a long tower, the land where the specters of Hades could not enter. They move to the place, and now they have to bring the soul of Alone from the underworld, so that they can revive Alone's life, just like Tenma. They capture Hades' soul to this place, where no one could reach and then Alone would be back. Hades is laughing at their foolishness, and in the meantime, Pandora arrives on a terrifying cart. 
She mockingly laughs at them and attacks the Lady Athena, but Tenma jumps and saved her. Hades asks them to leave the place and tells them about the lost canvas. He says that he will draw a massive painting of everyone on Earth. Whenever it is completed, the Earth will perish. He leaves the sanctuary, because he does not want to waste his time in useless fights. He will complete the painting, the Earth will turn dark, and their mission will be accomplished. Hades and Pandora leave on the cart flying in the air. Tenma tries hard to stop them but can't, as his weak fists cannot stop Hades. Pandora asks Hades why he visits the sanctuary without knowing anyone. Pandora is keeping an eye on Hades, because she believes that Hades is still impure and his human nature is not entirely vanished yet. That's the reason she has kept tracking him since before. On the other hand, Lady Athena and the Gold Saints are so sad that they could not save alone. However, this was the only chance to bring Alone back to his body and capture the soul of Hades. Now the only way to defeat Hades is to kill Alone. In the next scene, Tenma is sad to see Alone like this. Doke is making Tenma strong by motivating him to save the world, but not thinking about his friend Alone. Alternatively, Pandora comes forward to the gods of death and sleep. Pandora was banished because she could not remove all the impurities from Hades' heart. She blames Tenma as the reason behind the generation of Hades' impurities. The two specters are responsible for killing the Pegasus saint, Tenma, because he created impurities in Hades' heart by memorizing old memories. The specters enter the sanctuary to kill Pegasus, where Tora's saint trains the cadets for the final war. The specters spread the nightmare snore all over there to make everyone sleep. Now all of them sleep except Tora's saint because his eardrums are damaged and he can't hear the snore. He saves the Pegasus Saint and kills the Spectre. Another Spectre appear and attacks him with the help of a woman, who chants the Death Sermon. The Sermon is so demonic that it is used to be burst into the skin. Tora's Saint gets severely injured and dies, but still manages to save Pegasus Saint and sacrifice his life for him. Another influential leader moves toward Pegasus to kill him. He insults and makes him guilty that he is responsible for the saint's deaths. In the next scene, Tenma decides to leave the sanctuary and move to the village nearby. The cadets are so sad about the death of Tora's saint and mourning his grave. Tenma reaches there filled with guilt. He considers himself worthless and unable to save the sanctuary. Meanwhile, the cancer saint reaches and asks him to return to the sanctuary. He captures the Tenma and imprisons him because he seems to be suspicious as he is probably Hades' specter. On the other hand, Pandora is so sad and guilty that she cannot assassinate Tenma yet. She is also scared that she has decided to kill Pegasus on her own without the permission of Hades. She also made some other amendments to the plan on her own. Another saint of the underworld makes her so guilty and laughs at her about the punishment she is going to get in return. The saint advises her to imprison Hades, because his impurity can cause a disaster for them and they cannot afford that. Pandora refuses, because she loves Hades, but eventually agreed. Hades finally calls Pandora and asks why she decided to kill Pegasus on her own. Pandora gives a counter-talk and asks why he is still clinging to Pegasus and cannot forget their friendship. Hades argues that he has forgotten completely and is sincere to the underworld. However, Pandora sees the painting of Alone, Tenma and Sasha playing in the same garden, they used in their childhood on the lost canvas. She gets so scared, but Hades still argue to make her convince his point. Pandora believes that the memory of Alone still taints Hades. At this, Hades gets so furious and shut Pandora in a cage. On the other hand, Yato and Yuzuriha succeed in escaping Tenma from jail. Athenas are planning to save Pegasus and planning to make their next move. Sasha is heartbroken, because now they aim for Alone's soul to end the war. Master of Jammer blames Lady Athena for Hades' win, because she hoped and wished for her older brother's life. Only her wishing can save anything because she is so strong and her prayers bring life to death. She leaves her weapon of goddess there and runs crying. But surprisingly, Hades is now in a cage, just focusing on completing the lost canvas. Pandora is a traitor and imprisoned him with the help of other saints during the last conversation. She helped other saints of the cathedral to capture him. In the last scene, Tenma is safe. Lady Sasha makes him a promise to bring the three of them laughing and playing again. After this episode ends, watch the video of the left side if you have missed the previous video, and subscribe to any summary for more anime recaps.